okay, this is practice test 1A, and it says uh, the following data is gathered on the speed of a computer chip in the year it was made, 1985 is t equals zero, so this would be 1985, 1988, so on clear up to 1998, and this is the speed of megahertz of the computer. It wants us to get the linear relationship, so I copied, and then I pasted special as text this data into the uh, 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 linear sheet, and then I clicked the Get Equation from Data Points button, and I got my equation here, y equals 34.106x minus 71.626. The y tells us the winning, t uh, the speed of the uh, computer, and the x is the year after, number of years after 1985. Uh, the questions on this ask, uh, get the linear relationship, which we did, then get the slope, y-intercept, and x-intercept and correlation coefficients. So let's go ahead and do those. The slope is 34.1. That means every year the speed of the computer chip is increasing by 34.1 megahertz. The y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 71, which means in the year 0, 1985, the speed was negative 71.62. I know that's impossible and out of the domain of this model, but that's what the y-intercept tells us. The x-intercept is 2.1, comma, 0. That means 2.1 years after 1985, the speed would be 0. And the correlation coefficient is 0.907, which is greater than 0.7, so it's a strong positive relationship between these two variables. Um, write it in function notation, and if we wrote it in function notation, we'd just say f of x equals this, or if t was the variable here, we'd say f of t equals this. The uh, next problem asks, uh, what's the speed in the year 2000? Well, 2000 is 15 years after the base year of 1985, so the speed would be 439.96 uh, megahertz. And when will the speed be 1,000 megahertz? We'll put 1,000 in for Y, and you get uh, 31.42 years after 1985. Okay, on this problem, the percentage P of adult Americans that smoke can be modeled by this linear equation, where P is the percent of Americans that smoke, and T equals zero is the year 1950. We're assuming that the percentage of Americans that smoke is dependent upon the year. So P is the dependent variable treated like Y. Therefore, T, and T is always treated like X. So find the vertical intercept, that would be the p-intercept or y-intercept. So to find that, let x equal 0 or t equal 0. And if you let t equal 0, 5 times 0 is 0. So you just get 4p equals 280. Divide through by 4 and you get p equals 70. What does that mean? Well, that means in year 0, 1950, according to this model, 70% of people smoked. The horizontal intercept, x-intercept, you let y equal 0. And you get 5t equals 280. Divide through by 5 and you get t equals 56. What does that mean? Well, it means 56 years after 1950, nobody will smoke, according to this model. What is the slope? Well, to get the slope, you've got to solve it for the y variable. So take the t to the other side, and you get 4p equals negative 5t plus 580, plus 280. Divide through by 4, and you get p equals negative 5 fourths t plus 280 divided by 4, which is 70. Now, I just put those, well, this is the slope right here of negative 5 fourths, and that means that every four years, the percentage of people smoking drops by 5%. This problem says, when will the percentage of people smoking be 10%? Well, we actually plug this in as a whole number in for P. And if we plug in 10 and for P and solve it, you'll get your value for T. Now, what I did is I substituted the negative 5 fours and the 70 into the linear sheet for my A and my B. And then I just substituted the 10 in for Y, which is playing the role of the percentage and I get 48. So that means 48 years after 1950, 10% of people were smoke. And the last problem on this uh, part is a percentage of people that are smoke in 1980. 1980 is 30 years after 1950, so just plug 30 in for T there, or 30 in for T there, or 30 in for X right here, and we get 32.5% of people were smoke in 1980. Okay, this problem gives you the number of days after an antibacterial chemical in a water supply, and this is the concentration of the bacteria. And it says to get the linear relationship and quadratic relationship and see which one's closer after five days. So I copied and pasted special the data into the linear sheet right here. I click the button to get the equation from the data points, and I get my linear equation. It's right there. And here's my slope and my y-intercept. And the concentration predicted after five days was 66.48. I just put the 5 in for x. Well, the actual is 10, so 66.48 is way off. And this is not a good model at all. You can tell by the correlation coefficient being so close to zero. It's not 0 0.7 or higher. So this is a terrible relationship, between, not a good linear relationship between these variables at all. But if you look at the quadratic sheet, 
here's the same data, here's a quadratic equation of best fit, and here it is over here written out, and you can see that the data points, uh, the curve does come close to the data points, and the R squared value is up there pretty high, so it's a good relationship. The concentration after five days is 23.7. I know that's a good bit off from 10, but it is much closer, so the quadratic relationship does much better. The next problem says, according to the quadratic model, when will there be no bacteria in the water supply? And then E is when will there be uh, 30 uh, bacteria in the water supply? So let's do part D first, and we'll put 0 in for Y, because that's Y standing for the concentration, and we get no real solution. That means that the correct answer to this problem is never. It will, there will never be uh, no bacteria in this water supply. When will there be 30? We'll just type in 30 for Y, and you get two answers for that, day 5.64 and day 3.1. And then the next couple problems ask, when will the bacteria be at its lowest level? Well, right here is the minimum, and that minimum is at day 4.4, and the minimum level is 21.89 is the con lowest concentration that it ever goes to. And you can see that on the graph as well. Problem 4 says the equation of a hanging telephone line is right here. H is the height of the telephone line, and X is the horizontal distance from the lowest part of the telephone pole in feet. How close to the ground is the lowest part of the telephone line? And then what's the distance between the telephone poles if it hooks on a height of 200 feet? Well, this is a quadratic. Put in my coefficients, which are 1 fourth, uh, 0 for the linear, and uh, 100 for the constant. So 0.25, let me zoom this up, 0.25 is my, uh, or one-fourth, is my quadratic coefficient, my linear coefficient, there was no x to the first power, and my constant is 100. Once you get that in there, the lowest it uh, comes to the ground is 100 feet, so that answer is part A. Uh, part B, uh, what's the distance between the two telephone poles if it hooks it onto a height of 200 feet? Put 200 in for the y variable for the height, and you get 20 and negative 20. That means one telephone pole is here at negative 20. The other one is over here at 20. So the distance between the two telephone poles is actually 40 feet. Okay, on problem five, it says the farmer wishes to fence in four different breeds of animals, and he has 1,000 feet of fence. So we have two x distances, the top and the bottom, and five y distance. One, one, two three, four, five. So 2x plus 5y equals that 1,000 feet of fence. Solve this for y by taking the 2x to the other side, then divide through by 5, and you get y equals negative 0.4, because two, negative 2 divided by 5 is negative 0.4, 1,000 divided by 5 is 200. Substitute what y is right here into the area equation. Area equals x times y, so area equals x times this stuff. Taking the x through, you get area equals negative 0.0, negative 0.4 x squared plus 200 x. Well, that's a quadratic, so just go to your quadratic sheet and put in your coefficients at negative 0.4 and 200. Your c is 0, and your maximum area is a y value of 25,000 square feet. This would be the length, and if it asks what should the width be, just somewhere type in. So that is your uh, maximum area right here. This would be what the length should be, and to get what the width should be, uh, or to get the, uh, I guess, the y value, the distance up and down, this is the distance across, 250 is the distance across, but to get the distance up and down, we just take this number, the area, divided by the length, and we get 100. So that would be the dimensions to give you the maximum area of 25,000 square feet. If it said something like, what should the dimensions be to give you an area of, let's say, 500 square feet, we'll just type in 500 for uh, the y value, and there are two uh, different. Now, the question didn't ask this, but if it asked what dimensions would it be to give you an area of uh, 500 square feet, we'll type the 500 in for y, and that would be that there are two separate types of rectangles that would do it. One is, a, is if it has a uh, length, an x distance of 2.5, and another is if it has an x distance of 497. To get the other dimension, you just take the area divided by the length and that will give you the other dimension. So this one would be 198 by 2.5, and this one would be uh, 500 divided by this one, and that would be the area, uh, or that would be the width of that one. Uh, but there's your maximum area, and that's what the problem asks, and there's your dimensions, 100 by 250. So that will do it with this uh, part of the practice test.